myself to be a not too good Italian composer of about 1830 because the Paris Opera was very well known for its sort of large large um, spectacular pieces all of which were pretty frightful and I have a lot of fun with that if you ever find a It's also an introduction to the kind of havoc the unseen phantom has created for audiences over more than 60 years. I felt surrounded by something theatrical and larger than life and extremely romantic, and I thought that hasn't happened to me in a long, long time. Let me be your freedom. Let daylight dry your tears. I'm a with you beside you to guard you and to guide you. in advance to the success of Phantom. Before the show's opening night in London, a recording of this song had already made the British record charts, which was music to the ears of producer Cameron McIntosh. There were three top ten hits out of the show, which I don't think he's ever had before. On this London stage, there are curtains behind curtains, an opera within an opera, faces behind faces. And like the rest of the show, this scene at a masked ball in an opera house is full of drama and romance. And an undercurrent of menace, supplied by a genius with a disfigured face who always hides behind a mask and who could be anywhere within this crowd, the Phantom of the Opera. The director of the show is Hal Prim. There's a sense of incipient hysteria. Why are they never allowed to be secure? <laughs> makes just enough trouble when they least expect it. Next Tuesday, this theatrical spectacle will have its official Broadway opening, following a record advance ticket sale of more than $17 million, creating almost as much desperation at the box office as the Phantom creates within the show.
Solitude.